In this video, I'm gonna break down my top advice for freshmen entering computer science. What I would do differently if I time traveled all the way back to my graduation day of my senior year of high school. If I was stripped away of everything, how I'd restart my career from the ground up. My name's Amon. I'm a computer science student and software engineering intern at Shopify. And these tips are framed for people starting off in CS, but honestly, you can use them in any year of university. Yeah, let's begin. Okay, first of all, if I were to go back and restart college, I would take all of my classes seriously from day one. Back in high school, I never really tried to do that well. And I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate. Most of the time, I would just mess around, not really paying attention. And then the night before the test, I would try to learn everything in one go. I remember one time in AP Physics, one of my favorite classes, I didn't really pay attention for the entire optics unit. And then the day before the test, I went to the library and binged Khan Academy and learned the entire unit with my friend. And funny enough, it actually worked. I wasn't the best in the class, but I did pretty well using that strategy. However, the problem with this strat is that while it does work in the short term, later on in college, the workplace, that stuff doesn't fly anymore. And you're building all of these bad habits that you're going to have to fix later on. I ended up approaching my freshman year of college just like I went through high school, and it didn't work. I didn't do as well as I wanted to for a lot of my classes in that first year, so I had to take a step back and relearn from the ground up how to do school. I wish I took my college classes seriously from the get-go. Think about it this way. You want to cultivate an aggressive attitude that you put towards your classes from day one. Basically, you should be hustling from the beginning, which is going to save you a lot of pain later on. When you take classes, there are two opposite approaches or mentalities that you can use. Let's call the first one the cool guy strategy. The cool guy never really tries. He'll kind of mess around with his friends in the back of lecture. He basically never does the pre-reading, and especially during labs, he's not going to put any effort in. The day before anything is due, that's when the cool guy shines. He'll cram take a few hours and try to finish everything the night before. The truth is that the cool guy is addicted to procrastination. He loves that rush the late night deadline gives him, especially when it's validated by early success and the people around him who think it's cool. That's the first threat. Now we'll call the second mindset the tryhard. I'm gonna be honest, especially back in high school, everyone hated the tryhard. You all know that kid that would show up early to class, always have a series of questions to ask the teacher. They'd always get the homework done a few days early. We would all look down on them for doing well. And yeah, this is fine in high school because both the tryhard and the cool guy do well. Both their strategies work out so they just keep on using them. But once you go to college and the material gets exponentially more difficult, let me tell you, the cool guy doesn't fly. If you keep trying to be the cool guy in college, you're gonna be f***ed. And no one thinks the cool guy is cool anymore. What's cool is actually doing well, not procrastinating and then suffering. The problem with the cool guy is that when they realize that their strategy doesn't work, it's already too late. It could be a few weeks into the semester when you fail that first test and realize you need to change your mindset, but by then it's already too late and now it's really hard to pull back and change direction. This is why you should try to cultivate that try-hard aggressive mindset from day one. You need to ruthlessly attack all of the opportunities you have from the get-go. You deeply focus during every lecture, maybe even leaving your phone in the dorm so you're not distracted. You start looking at the assignment as soon as possible, maybe even the day you get it. You frequently go to office hours prepared with questions on the most difficult content. Honestly, office hours are so overpowered and underutilized. You literally have this all-knowing expert available to answer any questions, doubts, anything on your mind. Ideally, you should be going to them every week, and even if you don't have specific questions ready, you can just go there, sit down, work on your homework, and then ask any questions as they come up. You should also be trying to befriend and get to know your professors during office hours. If you ever intend to go to grad school, you're going to need three letters of recommendation, and let me be honest, right now, I couldn't get a single one. I don't know any professors, and even if you don't want to go to grad school, knowing your professors will make office hours in class much more fun. It'll reduce that barrier to getting the help you need. If you come into university with this extreme aggressive mindset and you end up doing too well or getting too many A's, you can always pull back and recalibrate. But what you don't want to do is come into college chilling, thinking that you can figure out everything later on, just like in high school, when you definitely can't. The second thing I do differently, and this is an extension of the first one, is build up systems to preemptively fight procrastination. Last year, I started listening to Cal Newport's Deep Questions podcast, and he brought up a really good strategy to stop procrastination for college students and to make sure you don't fall behind. Basically, before classes even begin or in your first week, you sit down for 30 minutes with the syllabi out and time block events in your calendar for everything for every class. You start out by putting in lectures, discussions, midterms, office hours, exams. Every scheduled event should be in your calendar. But you don't stop there. You figure out when all of the assignments for the entire semester are assigned and due. Are they given on a weekly schedule or a bi-weekly schedule? Then you time block in a slot of time to work on that assignment every week. So you start the assignment at the same time every week instead of doing it on the fly. For example, my sophomore year of college, 
My computer science class always had an assignment that was due every single Friday night. I knew this before the semester even started. So it was super easy for me to time block a two hour period from three to 5 p.m. on a Tuesday to always get the assignment started at the same time. You can even put in a location to work on it. The more detailed, in-depth, restrictive the system is, the better. Once you do this with all of your classes, then you can take a step back and look at about 80 to 90% of your entire workload for the whole year. It's all visually represented in your calendar right in front of you. And just having that physical representation of your time makes a huge quality of life difference. Now all you have to do is stick to the schedule instead of constantly worrying about what you have to do next. It also helps you stay ahead of your assignments. If you follow the system, you're not going to start something last minute. Now, there are going to be times when you have to push it off and work on something else. But at least if you have to physically move an event or deny an event, you'll know that you need to reschedule it and do it a different time rather than completely forgetting about it. If you want to take this one level further, you should schedule weekly recurring events to hang out with your friends and work on homework with a different friend group for every class. This is the ultimate form of assignment time blocking. You have that social encouragement to show up and do the work, even though you want to blow it off and sit on your phone. And you also make friends through the process. It's perfect. So if I were to go back and restart university, I would make sure that I had recurring time slots for every single assignment with at least one person there to do it with me, ideally a group of people. Number three is trying to get some kind of work experience in your resume as soon as possible. This is something I actually did right, but it's one of my most important tips, so I wanted to emphasize it. The summer after you graduate high school, everyone is going to tell you to relax and not do much before college. And yeah, I agree, it's important to have fun with your high school friends before everyone disperses to different parts of the country. But that summer when you have zero commitments is the perfect time to develop your skills and get something on your resume, especially if you're going into CS. There's this meme in tech where literally every position you apply for wants one to two years of experience. And it's like, how the hell are you supposed to get experience when everyone wants experience before you even show up? The truth is that you're probably gonna have to BS your way to your first job just to get something down. When you're in high school and in your first few years of college, Let's face it, your resume is going to be garbage. If you want even a sliver of a chance at a big tech company, you're going to have to get something as early and fast as possible to put down. Otherwise, no one is going to interview you. And it doesn't have to be a flashy, high paying internship. Like Drake says, you have to start from the bottom and slowly work your way up. Start with clubs, leadership, classes, skills, whatever you have from high school, just put that all down. But ideally, you need to get some sort of work experience, research, internships, or volunteering. Luckily, during high school, my parents really encouraged me to spend my summers volunteering and doing unpaid internships, so that after my first year of college, I'd have a semi-decent resume. I spent one summer working for free at a local IT company. I volunteered at a cardiovascular research foundation for a month. I did a research camp at the University of Iowa, where I got my first actual computer science experience, and all of this came together to help me get my first software engineering internship after my first year of college. It was at Modern Woodman, a local insurance company. It didn't pay much, it was like $15 an hour, and I lived at home during it. But the beauty of it was that it allowed me to put down that I had a full-time software engineering internship after my first year of college, which is something a lot of people don't have that. If you want to find your first internship, I highly recommend zeroing in on local companies that have open positions. If you know anyone in your area who's a software engineer, you can ask them if their business has an internship open that you can apply for and you can get a referral from them. It's about swallowing your pride and just putting something on your resume. And even if you can't get a dedicated CS job, just do something. Don't just sit on your ass. Anything is better than nothing. Be a waiter, a barista, a volunteer, do some research. Just do something that you can put on your resume before your first year. It doesn't have to be fun, it just has to look like you did something with your time. Fang internships don't come out of nowhere. Usually you have to incrementally work your way up. Obviously, there are those kids who end up getting Google after their freshman year of college, but let's face it, that's probably not you or me. You need to step by step slowly ascend the CS career hierarchy and eventually make it up to companies like Facebook and Amazon. So I started at Modern Woodman, and then the next summer I did a software engineering internship at John Deere. John Deere is much more recognizable and pretty big in my hometown, but it's still not at that fang level. John Deere was another stepping stone, which led me to Shopify and then finally Amazon. Let me tell you, almost everyone who graduated from my high school and went into CS did the John Deere internship in their first or second year. It's such a great foundation, a base for your resume that will propel you forward towards that higher paying Fang job. You'll never get the first interview from a Fang company unless you spend years slowly building up your work experience starting from the summer after high school. My fourth tip is kind of an extension to the last one, but I basically wish I started lead coding and practicing for coding interviews as early as possible right after graduating. See, lead code heavily relies on your problem solving ability. My brother is someone who did AMC, Math Olympiad, Math Counts, all of that stuff from an early age. So he was naturally good at coding interviews and lead coding. Me, 
I didn't do much of that stuff, so I started off university at a deficit. I only started working on lead code last summer before I applied to Fang, and honestly, I'm still not that good at it. If you're in high school right now, and especially if you're going to graduate and go into CS, probably the highest leverage thing you could do other than getting work experience is starting lead code immediately. Don't worry about the hard problems right now. Just dive into the easy ones and slowly work your way up. If you haven't learned any CS languages so far, that's also fine. Just learn the basics of a language and then slowly start incorporating lead code problems. I'd recommend Python because it's super simple and easy to pick up and it's great for coding interviews. My fifth tip is a little unrelated from software engineering and CS careers, but it's just as important. When you're a freshman in college, you should be joining a bunch of clubs, activities, teams, and slowly ascend the leadership hierarchy year by year so you can be president or a board member when you're an upperclassman. This is only something I realized recently, but nowadays I've noticed that I get f***ing depressed on the weekends. I don't know this was a thing, but yeah, apparently a lot of people experience weekend depression. During the weekdays, I'm super busy. I'm jam-packed from 7am to 7pm. I have personal training in the morning, work during the day, hot yoga or jujitsu in the evening. There's no time to sit there and just do nothing. I always have some sort of commitment, something to work on. An idle mind's the devil's playground, and I fully felt this on the weekend. On the weekdays, I'm up and out of bed in under 20 minutes. I have to be at the gym at 7am. Someone's literally waiting for me there, so I have to go. But I've noticed on the weekends, I end up laying in bed till 9, 10 in the morning. And it's not like this extra time on my phone helps with relaxation or recovery, it's just mindless scrolling. Sometimes I will lay there for so long in my phone, I start to get a headache or eye strain, and I still can't stop. It's ridiculous at this point. This is the importance of having responsibilities and places to be at. It's really hard to be sad and overthink your life when you have thing to thing to thing to go to and people are relying on you. If I were to go back to my freshman year of college, I would just max out my schedule. I would go to clubs, activities, hangouts, study sessions, office hours, anything to keep me from laying in the dorm because that's when the devil comes out. Ideally in the future, I'd pack my weekends full of commitments as well. It's not like I'd be working all the time, but instead of mindlessly laying on my phone, I can fill my day with active relaxation and recovery. I could go on a walk by the lake, listen to an audiobook at a botanical garden, read at a coffee shop, watch a movie with friends. All of these support relaxation and recovery, but not our passive consumption of short form content, which is the bait of my existence. Also, if you're in activities year after year, you'll have so many friends. At that point, it would be hard to not make friends because you just be around people all the time for years. If you're interested in the system I use to study for Elite Code using Notion, you can watch this video right here. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a comment down below because I read all of them and I will see you in the next video.